Hello, everybody, and welcome to the July 25th Heroes of the Storm patch notes. Uh, we're going to go over all of these notes and review them, so let's get started. Come along with me. Okay, so there's a lot of heroes that uh, are experiencing some changes. Let's dive deep into them, see what's going on. Alarak, basic attack damage increased from 140 to 150. Alarak is kind of that hero that floats on the fringe of being relevant. In Hero League, obviously, there's a lot of players um, that... Well, maybe not a lot of players, but there are some players that one-trick him. Um, he's extremely powerful if you're able to land his combinations. Having the additional attack damage is a pretty decent buff to him. Um, I didn't really see something like this coming, but it's fantastic. Uh, hopefully, it can increase his value in Hero League or even competitive, but it's not a massive change, but it's still something, so it's, it's not bad. Um, Phoenix, okay, reducing his basic attack damage from 86 to 83. Not massive, but in addition to um, the Arsenal Synergy nerf at level 1, this is actually pretty huge. Arsenal Synergy is definitely Phoenix's best level 1 talent. It gives him better wave clear. Um, it gives him better poke within team fights, um, And it just it helps him with his burst damage, basically. And and seeing these nerfs is a little bit sad, but it's definitely needed. As, as most of you know, I am a pretty huge advocate of Phoenix and, and also just this play style. So it's, it makes me a little bit sad, but it, I totally understand why. Moving some of that power, 5% into mobile offense as well. Genji, reset window for Swift Strike, reduced from two seconds and 1.5 seconds. Damage reduced as well. So it's just nerfs all around for Genji. Um, more to his E, also to the Dragon Becomes Me, his level 20 upgrade, f upgrade for his Dragon Blade. Um, so just the, the reset window reduced across the board for E. Not going to remove him from play. Again, we're seeing him banned now that there's three bans in Hero League and in competitive. We're seeing him banned in like every single game. Genji not getting a lot of play time just because he's still very strong. And this is not going to stop him from being strong. Hanzo. This is an interesting one. His basic attack damage is increased. So he's going to hit harder. Um, I want to talk about the, the reason why, apparently, but um, this is the big one here. Sonic Arrow, reveal radius reduced from 10 to 7. This is absolutely massive. Uh, it allows warriors who are playing against Hanzo to actually continue to make plays during the early game because sometimes you just have to sit there for 8 seconds while the Sonic Arrow is down and just do nothing because there's no possible way you can make any plays with vision against a Hanzo. So this is huge. Not only was the reveal radius reduced, but also the duration reduced. So both across the boards, I think this is the, one of the most important nerfs that Hanzo needed, and that's coming from a Hanzo main myself. Uh, also, the natural agility cooldown increased. I don't think this is... Like, 5 seconds is pretty huge, but... I've never said like, oh man, I just wish I had five more seconds or like, oh man, I would have survived if my D was up in one more second. Like that, that very rarely happens because when you use your D, you play accordingly. And if it's a 30 second cooldown, you're going to play accordingly for 30 seconds. You're going to play back. You're going to use your scatter arrows. You're just going to scout for vision. Um, if they force out this cooldown on you, you, you just have to play defensively. So I don't think this is going to change too, too much of Hanzo's play style or even his relevance. They're... Re this is the developer comment. Hanzo, while extremely desired and powerful in professional play, doesn't have the same success across all levels of Hero League. We think that by reducing the power of Sonic Arrow and shifting down to basic attacks, not only will Redemption be more attractive, but also Hanzo's success should rise. I don't like that. I don't like that they're saying that they rem they because he isn't performing well in Hero League, they took his power from his vision control, which is more powerful than basic attacks, and put it into basic attacks. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Controlling vision is important. Um, just because maybe players don't understand how important it is doesn't mean that changing his E to his auto attack damage and trying to like shift around Hanzo's power is going to change his relevance. Yes, I guess basic attacks are more uh, staple for people. They understand it more than vision control. Therefore, I guess maybe something like this can show success. But um, and even the reason not only will redemption be a more attractive option, it's like a lot of the times redemption isn't the option just because that's kind of the way that Hanzo gets shut down. It's those like high risk play styles that uh, lower level players will gravitate to. That is the problem. I don't like the shift in focus, but I do like the fact that Sonic Arrow was nerfed. Um, sorry, I don't like their reasoning for doing it, but I do like that Sonic Arrow was nerfed. That's basically it. Kael'thas, damage increased across the board. Can't really argue with that. I think that Kael'thas needs more showing in the meta. I think he's a fantastic hero, and I miss seeing him frequently. 
basically the only person that I see playing him is March. So uh, flame strike increased from 320 to 345 damage and the explosion, da explosion damage increased from 200 to 215. I think this is just great all around. Rainer. His Raider weapon damage reduced from 24 to 21. Pretty big. Ace in the hole. This is the biggest one. 10% damage reduction across the board. This level one talent is absolutely insane. And if you're not going it, you definitely should have been. Um, that, this is going to impact him the most for sure. Level four behemoth armor. Uh, base health gain reduced uh, from 250 to 200. Fight or flight. Armor duration reduced from 4 to 3 seconds, so both just survivability nerfs to Raynor. Nothing too massive, but uh, it's still there. And the slow duration from Unstable Compound. Um, I don't know many people that were going that talent anyways, so I'm not sure if that one really matters. The developer comment, Raynor's Pepper is bringing a bit too much salt. It's pretty good. This is going to be the biggest nerf, but it's not going to remove Raynor uh, from play whatsoever. Like He's still going to be super strong. Um, and if you haven't been playing Rainer, you certainly should be. Tracer, you're just beating her while she's down, I guess. Nerfing Tracer again. Uh, basic attack damage reduced from 27 to 26. Not huge, but still just another little bit of a nerf. And then the damage reduced um, on Quantum Spike from 8 to 7%. Asmodan. This is another big one. Globe of Annihilation. Damage increased from 164 to 192. Damage scaling reduced from 4% to 3%. So his late game power with his Q, not as strong because of the scaling, but his early game increased. That means he's going to be um, more effective during the early game as far as poke damage and stacking his Q. I'm not sure if this was needed. I personally think that um, it was pretty easy to stack his Q in almost every situation. I never had any issues getting to 400 stacks before the pride level at uh, at 20. I've never missed it. So if I've never missed it, I think lower level players should be around you know 350 sort of thing and, and might be able to hit that 400 mark or just don't go pride. Um, next is the summon demon warrior attack damage increased periodic damage increased health increased so just buffs across the board for w and same with all shell burn there's the cooldown reduction the mana cost was increased a little bit so cooldown reduction from eight to six seconds mana cost from 30 to 40 periodic damage reduced from 34 to 30 um, and then the final damage is increased from 272 to 320 and to me this is really big the final damage tick from all shell burn is actually huge it chunks out people massively especially if a warrior engages and you just drop the all shell burn after you use your combo maybe some auto attacks as they're running out like this is a good bit of damage and it has secured me a lot of kills on asmodan so i i'm personally excited about this one the demon lieutenant attack damage increased from 27 to 41 so he's hitting harder um and pretty decent health increase 548 to 593 Demonic Invasion changes. I don't even know if I should go over it just because you shouldn't be going it. Um, yeah, I'm going to actually do that. Okay, Wrath. Arguably Asmodan's best level 1 talent. The bonus damage window reduced from 4 seconds to 3 seconds. I don't think this is going to change Wrath from being his best level 1 talent. It's between Wrath and Gluttony. Greed sometimes on maps if you're playing him in quick match like um, uh, Warhead Junction you could get pretty good use out of greed maybe even like black hearts if you're playing qm but aside from that it should be wrathing and gluttony mainly if you're not comfortable with weaving in the auto attacks you go gluttony if you are definitely go wrath just because the damage potential is much higher hell forged uh hell forged armor the uh, w and d talent for has been at level four armor bonus reduced from 35 to 30 uh, and then battleborn demon warrior cooldown reduction increased um across the board 0.5 to 0.75 seconds for the demon warriors and the demon lieutenant is 1 to 1.5 so this is big for asmodan art of chaos hitting two or more heroes with global annihilation restores 30 mana and uh generates four annihilation that's the new functionality at level 10 level 7 sorry i don't think that this is going to be the go-to for asmodan brutish vanguard the W and D talent, level 13, added functionality. Health bonus now applies to demon lieutenants in addition to demon warriors. That's cool. Uh, chain of command, added functionality, also increases the cooldown of demon lieutenants. Demonic smite decreases the cooldown, sorry, by two seconds. I guess I just 
Again, increases the push potential of the Demon Lieutenant. Um, level 16, Hell Rift. Demon Warrior damage bonus duration increased from 4 to 6 seconds. Uh, don't think many people are going Hell Rift, but Pride. Damage bonus increased from 100 to 125. So even though he got some reduced scaling right here on the Q, at least they gave him a little bit more at level 20 with pride. And I think that's important because I don't think you should be nerfing Asmodan at the top level of play uh, just to help people at the lower level of play. That never makes sense to me. Asmodan's win rate has slowly crept up. His players got a hang of his rework. His PVE elements are less impactful. Yeah, so they made these changes to help him stack in the beginning of the game. But if you get to that level 20 mark, you get a decent little damage buff. All in all, I like these changes to Asmodan. They increased his PvE power, which I did also feel was lacking a little bit in comparison to old Asmodan. Once you hit level 10 and you were stacked on Sieging Wrath with old Asmodan, I felt like you just controlled the game. Murky, level 13 fish tank. Uh, he's healed for 25% of all damage he deals instead of having that 75 physical armor. So he is more resilient in more situations instead of just being like unstoppable in one sergeant hammer i'm sorry all you orbital bfg players in quick match causing grief to everybody across the nexus blunt force gun no longer deals damage to enemy structures let's take a moment <laughs> Goodbye. Deckard Kane. He needs some nerfs, and this is not enough. Healing reduced on his potions from 230 to 219. Not enough. Uh, of a nerf, sorry. The, the Just a Q, I think this is fine. But in general, this plus the Ancient Blessings, not enough for Deckard Kane. He's still too strong, in my opinion. Damage reduced from 72 to 68 on Ancient Blessings, and then the healing reduced from 106 to 100. Ancient Blessings is still disgusting. This is... On per auto attack, let's remember. I don't think these are enough nerfs to stop Deckard Kane from being as oppressive as he is. However, moving on to the next support nerf. Goodbye, Malfurion. Sweet druidic boy. You've dominated the Nexus for too long. Look at this, folks. Ice block level 13 removed. And to make it worse, it's like... Putting salt on the wound. They moved a level 1 talent to level 13. Buffed it a little bit. Actually, quite a bit. But still, that's brutal. Malfurion players, I'm sorry. That's rough. Level 1, new talent rejuvenation. Malfurion gives five, gains 5 health per second for every active regrowth. I need to test this to find out whether or not it's good. You know, technically, it could be pretty decent, especially if it scales. But um, I think maybe it's going to be... Uh, celestial alignment or the uh, innervate talent at level one then that's this is rough for malfurion i'm sorry support players and mouth mains this one not as bad but this is brutal not having ice block is malfurion you don't have the ice block tranquility combination you don't uh you can't ice block any incoming ganks or or any dives onto you malfurion players are gonna have to play in space in order to not die because we all know malfurion has no mobility this is a rough one for malf Artanis changes. These are interesting. Um, mana cost decreased on his blade dash. I don't know if that was ever really a big problem. I know Horse Pants has been talking about Artanis, and he feels like the new build is going to be swap build, I think is what he was saying. But anyways, psionic energy, new functionality. Hitting an enemy hero with phase prism grants Artanis 15 armor for 3 seconds. If you're getting consistent swaps, this is actually pretty darn good. Having 15 armor consistently within a team fight is massive. Um, cooldown reduction increased from 50% to 100%. I, like, it's pretty good. The, uh, these changes so far. Level 13, Templar Zeal, new functionality. Reduce the mana cost of Blade Dash each time that, uh, by 50%. Each time that Shield Overload activates, reduce the cooldown of Blade Dash by 5 seconds. Again, they're just increasing Artanis' late game power or changing around his late game talent so that he can have some greater survivability. Uh, Graviton Vortex, new functionality. Reduce the mana cost of Phase Prism by 50%. Hitting an enemy hero with basic attacks or Blade Dash lowers the cooldown of Phase Prism by 1.25 seconds. I can see a lot of synergies with this plus the Psionic synergy. 
um, having the cooldown reduction of phase prism and constantly having that 15 armor. I think that could be a pretty cool talent choice for Artanis. Having that plus the shield, um, your uh, your shield overload activating, I think you have a lot of survivability as this hero. Phase Bulwark, while Artanis uh, has shields from shield overload, gain 50 spell armor. This armor lasts for two seconds after shield overload expires. Again, pretty big the level 13 mark yes it's not going to have this synergy here but uh still more options during the late game to keep this hero alive new talent blades of the templar increases basic attack speed by 30 percent basic attacks now slow enemy movement speed by 20 percent it's basically like having a overpowered level 20 talent um nexus blades overpowered nexus blades at level 16 so this is not something to look past this is pretty huge Sonic Wound removed, Force of Will uh, moved from level 20, so anytime a level 20 talent is moved to a lower tier, it's always worth looking at. Anytime any higher talent is moved to a lower tier, it's worth looking at. Um, casting basic abilities reduce the cooldown of Shield Overload by 5 seconds. So again, greater survivability for the hero. Titan Killer, basic attacks against heroes deal an additional 0.5% of their maximum health and damage. Twin Blades against uh, heroes deal an additional 1.5% of their maximum health as damage. There we go. Yeah, so Nexus Blade is, is removed and because of this. Purifier, target purifier also increases the speed of the purifier beam by 50%, 15%. This is big uh, because a lot of the times you can just run away from the purifier beam, but a 15% movement speed increase is nothing to scoff at. It can chase you down. It can kill you. You guys all know what it feels like when you die to purifier beam. It sucks. Zealot Charge. Moved from level 16 to 20 that's rough plasma burn move from level 16 same sort of thing developer comments we saw an opportunity to give artanis some more competitive talents particularly on his later tiers our goal with these changes was to create some different play styles and synergies between his talents yeah exactly and give him a little bit more punch as the game goes on because that's when the team can lock him down i really like this i haven't had an opportunity to try it obviously but this looks really good for artanis players blaze hero radius increased from 0.875 to 1. He's now a thick boy, as he should be. Neural Stimpak now only reduces the cooldowns of basic abilities. This is a very good nerf to Blaze. I don't think it should be Neural Stimpak every single game. I think this is great. I love the direction. The Hero Radius is just going to help when it comes to landing skill shots on him. Haha. <laughs> you choke all mains out there in Quick Match and in Team League? Get wrecked. Level 16, Surging Dash on Cho, no longer grants Cho unstoppable. So have fun. Not being unstoppable with your heal. I'm going to interrupt you every single time, and then I'm going to take you down. This is really, really, really good. Diablo, Lightning Breath, Slow Amount per Tick reduced from 5% to 4%. Slow Amount re uh, reduced from 50% to 40%. Per uh, not really worth mentioning. Uh, just a little bit of nerfs on Lightning Breath. Art and Defender increased from 100 seconds to 120 seconds for Urel. This is pretty big. Art and Defender is a very powerful talent. And having a two-minute cooldown... I think that Urel players need to think more before using Art and Defender. And that's just that whole clause is increased now with the increased cooldown. Maraud's Insight, the healing got reduced from 148 to 128. Also a great nerf hand of freedom uh cooldown reduced from 33 or er, from 30 to 22 seconds interesting uh so i guess they're trying to make her level four a little bit more dynamic instead of everybody just going to e talent for armor i like this divine steed nerfed from 80 percent to or sorry um yeah from 80 percent to 60 percent I mean, it is pretty sizable in terms of percentages, but it's still a good talent in my opinion. Templar's Verdict, level 16, now also deals 4% of the hero's maximum health as damage. And Holy Wrath, the passive um, damage bonus reduced from 30% to 20%. So this is pretty good. Templar's Verdict, level 16. Again, they're just trying to make different talents at different tiers where everyone always goes one talent more dynamic. That's what this looks like to me. Developer comments, Yurel has been very strong since her last updates, and a few of her talent tiers are dominated by a single talent. By applying some nerfs to overperforming talents, we think Yurel will be brought back in line with other heroes. Fixed. Okay, so these bug fixes I want to talk about because some of them are important. Fix an issue allowing several effects to be seen at the edges of Fog of War. That's super important, and it has been plaguing our games. So thank you, Blizzard. 
You're amazing. AI, this one. Fix an issue causing player following AI controlled heroes to use Hearthstone and long distance movement abilities. Thank you. And then fix the anti aliasing from being enabled as well. Um, what's the other one? This one, Alex Straza, the life binder going on full cooldown if interrupted during the um, channel time. So the bunker issues, any other stasis issues with Alex Straza where people were abusing her life binder, now fixed. Um, what was one of the other ones? <laughs> nobody, nobody plays this map, you guys. Oh, Rainer's Raider will now hearth back. Zagara can exit Nidus Worms in the direction. And that's about it. Yeah, so I personally really, really like this patch. I'm concerned about what happened to Malfurion. I'll be completely honest. Uh, I don't like supports getting nerfed to the point of unusability. And I'm really worried about Malfurion's power in the meta without Ice Block. Ice Block is one of his crucial talents. Um, I'm scared for Malfurion. This is the one thing that I don't like. Besides from that, everything else is looking good. I love this nerf. Um, I love most of the buffs and changes in this patch. And if you guys haven't checked out one of my previous ones, you can. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I have my Twitch link just on the side here, as well as my Twitter, if you guys want to follow me on socials. And I look forward to seeing you in the Nexus.